Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review. This time, the 2020 film, Greenland. I know this hit streaming in December, but I'm sorry, just got around to it because it can't, I got a hard release. Um, if you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm not going to get into too many spoilers, but the idea of the movie is it's another end of the world destruction movie and one guy is trying to get his family to safety. That's the story. I will start by saying I totally applaud what writer Chris Sparling, who's written several things, but nothing of huge note, and Rick Roman Wah, Uh, what they attempted to do in this film and what they achieved with this film. With only like a $35 million budget, the movie looks like a $100 million box office smash. It's made about $52 million so far, so a hit. Um, The director, Rick Waugh, has directed several movies like Felon. He's worked with uh, The Rock and things like that. Uh, But most recently in 2019, he directed Angel Has Fallen, the third of the has fallen movies if that's what they're calling the trilogy and he's lined up and directing the fourth one as we speak so working with gerard butler this is the second time and now he's working with him a third time i guess it's working out for them um rick is a former stunt guy in the 80s and 90s he's in a lot of the biggest movies that have ever been made and he made his jump to directing movies back in 2001 which is 20 years ago and he makes a movie every three five six years there seems to be a good space between him making movies um but i'm interested to see what he does with the next movie i think they're calling it night has fallen um because i thought angel has fallen was actually pretty good for a threequel um the sequel i really liked and re-watching them recently um really liked the sequel almost better than the first one and the third one took it down to a more personal level and i get that and and it was a good it was an entertaining third that i want to see what happens after and that's pretty rare as far as, you know, film series go. So the idea of Greenland is he's, uh, and it was instantly recognizable to me. It was filmed around Atlanta. Um, he's a, a, a construction, structural engineer in Atlanta working on a big building, and he's trying to get out of there for something. And then through the kind of montage of the beginning, uh, the workers are trying to get him out of work because he's supposed to leave early for something and he doesn't really want to go, but he does want to go and he's nervous about it. And then you see him arrive at this nice home in the suburbs of Atlanta and he thinks about ringing the doorbell and then he uses a key. So I like the fact that they're they're not really, well, he was separated and now he's trying to get back. You know, you have to kind of pay attention here in the beginning to catch all the little things that are going on because they don't even really explain what happened between the two of them until about halfway through the movie. Um, Anyway, it focuses on this family. And when a rogue comet or group of comet fragments are coming into uh, and possibly hit Earth, nobody's too concerned about it. He's at work. It's on the news in the background or whatever. But, and this is... I'm not going to get into too much of the scientific background of this movie, but it is true that when comets get closer to the sun, jets of gas erupt out of them as things melt and and it changes their trajectory. So there is a plausibility to what happens in this movie enough to get us, you know, to be the MacGuffin to get the dramatic story going. The biggest negative thing I have to say about Greenland, and I figured reading some of the reviews I read before I watched it, that budget was going to be a concern or the ending was going to be a concern. None of that played into my complaints about the movie. It's a two hour movie. And although it's paced well and done well, it just has one too many subplots, maybe two. (laughs) Look, uh, as I said in the beginning, I totally applaud the idea of let's make a disaster movie about the characters. And you care about these characters that they introduce. Um, His wife is Morena Baccarin. Uh, We know her from Firefly and Deadpool. Um, The kid is very good in the movie, and it turns out he's diabetic, so keeping his meds around him and some things that happen with the government and the kid and the shelter and all that kind of stuff. This is plausible. I mean, there's a lot of plausible things that happen in the movie, um, that there are these secret, uh, top secret shelters where a certain lottery, uh, 
of people have been picked to go there. Um, you find out a little bit later in the movie as they're having a discussion, kind of a little round table thing in a truck that, well, he was picked because he's a structural engineer. They're going to need that if they rebuild civilization, right? Because he was like, I'm just a construction worker. Why would they need me? Well, you know, if you're a good one of those and you can rebuild giant buildings, uh, you're going to be pretty important in rebuilding the country or the world. And, but a lot of people don't get picked. Like less than 1% of people get picked for these, these shelter things. And this is all in the first 15 minutes of the movie. I'm not giving anything away. And that is that, that is the, the gist of the entire movie is them trying to get to shelter for, they have, have they have been chosen, but Things get in their way. They get separated. And that's where my problems with the movie come up. Yes, I I totally found it believable that people would panic and try and give them their children to take with them, even though the instructions are very, very clear from the president that the names that are in this message are the only ones can get in. You can't bring anybody. You can't bring any patch. You can't bring any stuff but one bag. Um, And this is there is no you know and so like when they're trying to get out of the neighborhood some of the families come forward and well like just take our kids you could take our kids you know and that part and subplot and those kind of things totally believable but there's a few things that happen once they get separated it's like they both have the hardest time possible <laughs> there's an old movie uh with Ashton Kutcher called uh uh, uh butterfly effect and the only thing that holds that back from being a really interesting sci-fi, dramatic, psychological thriller is that every time he did a time travel thingy to fix something, he didn't just make things worse. He made them as worse as they possibly could be every single time. It, it's not like, oh, well, this changed and, and these people didn't meet or these people. No, this person became an amputee. This person became a, you know, <laughs> this person died. The 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 outcome of 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 everything that the main character did in Butterfly Effect just was to the nth degree horrific. It, it wasn't just some of the things were okay. And that's not very believable because, like, really, his, could his luck be this bad? And I guess the overall idea of the movie was, you know, you try and change time. You're, you're messing with things that you shouldn't mess with. But that was my. that's an older movie, and, and it's not, not a well-loved movie. But that's what kind of came here is because, like, what she and the and the son have to go through and what the husband has to go through for them to get back together, it's like either one of those would have been a fine subplot to continue and carry the momentum of the movie while the other party was trying to catch up. But the fact that they are both bogged down in some, not just the worst thing that could happen, but the very, very most horrific worst thing that could possibly happen is what happens to them in trying to reach their goals. I think just just from somebody who's watched thousands of movies and reviews movies, it's just like that was the only thing holding this movie back from being a, a box office success, which it already is a, a slight one uh, and a big one considering the times we live in right now. But if this were if things were normal, this was 2019 and this movie came out, a lot of reviewers would say that it's just it just goes too many different places in the effort to get to where they're going. I, I would. Again, applaud the idea to make this about the characters, not about the destruction. They spent a lot of money on special effects, and when there are special effects, they're very well done and believable. Um, They're worked into the story very well. It's not um, just to to give us eye candy to get us through the next set piece. There's nothing like that. This is a very realistic movie reminding me of some of the movies about the... uh, uh, nuclear winter and stuff in the 80s that we got it, it's very matter of fact very gritty very down to earth very real most of the bad stuff that happens is from other humans being assholes to each other being you know not nice uh, and people do panic when things go bad i've been in hurricane and tornado situations i've seen a, a few fragments it's not like we see in every movie where like <laughs> everybody flips out most people keep their heads and, and get through things um but and, and again that's this movie as many plausible things they do with the science fiction aspect and the 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 national we're going to save as many as we can from the country aspect and some of the other things that are going on in the plot you didn't need to have these terrible things where somebody tries to steal the kid and and somebody tries to kill the husband and it's just it was like wow but that being said it's not a major problem it would be the only major you know the only minor problem i have with the movie cuz otherwise I love the fact that it's about characters. We care about them. We want to get to where they're going. It just seems like, man, nobody would have to go through all this to get there, you would think. 
But anyway, um, when it was over, I watched the alternate ending. I got to say, okay, yeah, I'm glad they changed it. The, the, uh, the ending they didn't use is not that big a deal. It, it kind of shows an epilogue of what happens in this movie. But the epilogue they do, I think, is more slightly more effective. Looks more like a special effect where the, the, the original ending was actual things filmed, and I guess they didn't fill in special effects, but it was fine. Um, but yeah, I could see the change. And, and overall, I think uh, Gerard Butler does a great job as playing, he's not playing a superhero type character as he does in some of the Has Fallen movies. He's just trying to survive and get his family safe and, and save the meds and all that kind of stuff. And he does a great job. Morena does, uh, she's fantastic. She's a great actress. She needs to be in more things. And um, like I said, I, I don't remember the, the kid's name, but he's really, really good. Scott Glenn has a, a small role as her father where they try and get to him to meet up. And there was a couple of scenes that get a little bogged down in the backstory of the couple at a point when we're like, we need to get going here. You know, <laughs> There's less than 24 hours to get into the shelter and you're talking about what broke you up and how the father felt about it and stuff like that. I know they, they scored Scott Glenn. And if you get Scott Glenn in a movie, you want to give him lots of stuff to do. And the scenes he's in leading up to this big scene are, are great. He plays the father. Well, he's not a, the biggest fan of the, the son-in-law, but you can tell he kind of likes him. And, um, you know, it, it's just good. As old as he is, Scott Glenn does a great job, but then they get into the scene where I'm like, okay, we're five minutes into this and we have 20 less than 24 hours left. I would table this conversation, but, not to give anything away, not everybody's going to the shelter, so this may be the last conversation they ever have, right? I like that it has a good ending. Uh, some of the reviews I read saying most of the destruction is seen off screen. No, no. Um, they kind of pan around the world and show what's happened in the wake of, of, of what happens in the film. And you know, they spent some money. It's not screenshots. These are three-dimensional special effects, and they're very well done, and it looks realistic. Um and then, like I said, there's an epilogue on the end that I liked. Um, and overall, I liked the film. I just found it a little frustrating in the middle that we're, oh, we're stopping down for this dramatic beat, and we're stopping down from this dramatic beat. And again, I applaud the fact that it's a drama and not a sci-fi extravaganza, but almost too much. A, a little more editing. Um, maybe take one subplot out that just wouldn't have changed the end of the film. And there's a couple of those, actually. Um, but other than that, uh, if you catch it on streaming... It, it's it's totally worth a watch. Uh, there's good acting in it. It is nonstop from the moment it gets going. Um, I talked about scenes where they do dramatic things. They're not very long, and it does propel the story forward. It's not like a total waste of time or anything. Um, it just, the movie could, with a little trimming, a little pruning, not even trimming, pruning, uh, would be a more beautiful shrubbery than, than it is. But it is an entertaining two hours. You won't hate the fact that you wasted it. Uh, most of my friends that I've talked to had similar problems with the movie. It was just like one too many bad things happened to them, or one, you know, it was just a little too too hard to get to where they were going. But you know, it works out how it works out. And and overall, I like the movie and would recommend it to you. Will I buy it and own a copy of it? Probably not. Um, I like a little more. Um, I don't know. These days, I'm a little more picky about what I buy, but as a Redbox rental, it's totally fine. It's a, a great picture. The special effects look great. Um, I don't think it got a 4K release, maybe streaming, um, but the Blu-ray looks good. Uh, high quality, great soundtrack, great surround sound. Um, good cinematography. Overall, it's a good movie. It should have been released theatrically, but it got pushed back multiple times because of, because of COVID and finally was released in other countries in December, but we only got streaming. And now this month it's gotten a, a a hard copy release on home video. So check it out if you're into end of the world movies where you always said, well, I didn't care about the characters. This is the exact opposite. This is all about the characters and not about the end of the world. Well, it's about what the characters are having to deal with. Um, I'm like the, the pharmacy scene. Uh, again, I'm coming up with subplots that are like, okay, any, a couple of, a handful of these subplots would have been great, but there's just an overabundance of them. And it just seems like it's way too hard to get to where they're going. But other than that, <laughs> I sound like I didn't like the movie. I actually was entertained. Uh, my dogs enjoyed it as well. Uh, the surround sound was good. The picture was good. And the movie was entertaining. So I recommend Greenland as a stream, not a purchase, but check it out. You might enjoy it. And if you're a Gerard Butler fan, this is a no-brainer. 
I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. The Rockfile is my website with all my links. Please share, like, and subscribe, and have a fantastic day. Oh,